All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with legendary wrestling announcer, Mr. Howard Finkel. Uh, Howard, how are you doing here today? We're at the Hamilton Comic Con. We are indeed, Dan, and it's a pleasure to see you again. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, now, uh, for these kind of shows, so do you do a lot of these, uh, Howard? Because, I mean, a lot of the wrestlers are really starting to hit these comic conventions quite regular. Yeah, the comic uh, cons, for lack of a better term, are, are very good. Uh, I, I don't consider them comic book conventions, Dan. They're pop culture events. Right. And that being said, wrestling has been a part of the pop culture for quite some time. And now everyone affiliated with my industry, or most everyone, realizes that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get the opportunity periodically to come out to these events. And I'll tell you what, it's really good because you get to meet the people that have supported you in, in, ter in return. You get to thank them as well. Yeah, well, absolutely. And th this man definitely is one of the best wrestling ring announcers I've ever heard in my life. Well, how did you get in, like, how did you get started in, in wrestling or ring announcing? Or uh, like, how did Howard Finkel get into this? Reader's Digest version. I was an <laughs> usher back in the early 70s at the New Haven Coliseum in New Haven, Connecticut. And back in that era, Dan, uh, you needed television to run your live events. You couldn't promote it uh, any way but with television. And if you had the opportunity to try and run an event without television, you were biting, your, you know, biting off your head to spite your face. Mm -hmm. So I was an usher, I was a big wrestling fan. And then the building uh, lost wrestling because they had no TV. But there was a UHF station out of Long Island, New York, that was coming into Connecticut. And I went to the building manager. I said, you've got to get wrestling back. You've got to get wrestling back. It's on TV. Meanwhile, he was talking to our Vince McMahon today. Right, right. And uh, he, the building manager told him that there was a gentleman uh, that works for me as an usher, and he's an absolute fanatic for your product. And Vince, and he was kept badgering me to bring it in. So uh, Vince said, I want to meet him. And that was back in June of 1975. Whoa. And as they say, the rest is history. Wow, that's amazing. Now, uh, Howard, you've been able to you know, witness wrestling for such a long period and all the changes that have, have taken place. How would you, I don't know, how would you compare how it's gone from like the 70s to like the expansion to the Attitude Era to what we have now? Well, uh, for me, change is good. Uh, you have to evolve with the times. You have to, uh, you know, stay ahead of the curve, per se. Now, there are some things that I would love to see back in today's wrestling. I call them lost arts, like managers, right. uh, like uh, a better emphasis on tag teams. Uh, and hopefully that will come in time. But to, to, to stay ahead of the curve, Dan, and to be a part of the way the wheel turns, you have to be supportive of it, and you just cannot stand pat on your laurels. Keep moving with the times, and you'll succeed. Yeah. Is there now of, of all these different periods? Is there a particular favorite of yours, or have you just been you've enjoyed it all? You just answered the question. <laughs> I've enjoyed it all, no matter what era it's been, from when we started with the Rock and Wrestling Connection all the way to the Attitude Era and to today's product. It's been a great ride, and. I'm fortunate to say I'm still on it. Mm -hmm, yeah. Now, when Vince wanted to do the expansion there, how, how did you guys feel? Because I think, you know, that was a pretty big gamble with WrestleMania and trying to go national like that when, you know, all the promoters had that kind of unwritten law that you don't cut into our territories. Was, like, you as, as employees, were you scared by this or you just felt, no, Vince is going to do it? And There was trepidation, no question about it, but the trepidation was totally offshot by confidence. Mm -hmm and the belief that what Vince wanted to do was going to be fantastic. And everyone, to the best of my recollection, was beyond supportive of the effort. We knew it was a risk, but with the efforts put forth and the hard work and, and diligence from everyone, it paid off. Yeah, no, it, cer it certainly did. That is, for, that is for sure. And it took things into really an, a, a level that it's never it dropped down from before, you know. Um, again, the, the, I, I'm curious about the attitude there because, again, that was a big shift, you know. We had kind of a more, um, not a cartoon product, but more a child-oriented product. And then we had the attitude there where they're just like, man, they went straight for the groin and got a little racy and raunchy. I mean, how, did, how did that feel when that was starting to develop? That must have been something. Once again, uh, we uh, were involved at that time in, well, let's just call it a spade a spade. We were in a war with WCW right. back then in the mid to late 90s. And to ratchet up a little bit, the Attitude Era was born. 
and that in and of itself was one of the most successful periods we had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, uh, there's no doubt about it. It's uh, and that's what competition will do. And I think that's one of the things that's kind of missing in pro wrestling right now is that there isn't real any huge competition for uh, the WWE. Well, uh, for me, competition is always needed. Uh, I, I feel that for us to remain uh, razor sharp and giving our product the best possible edge that we can, you need competition. It's out there. Uh, I don't know in what doses it is, but... <laughs> well, that's uh, the thing. I mean, is TNA considered competition? I get the impression Vince doesn't consider them competition at all. I have no idea what Vince is thinking, but I, I believe that, uh, you know, you have to just make sure... you got to just keep on your toes and just be aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. If, now, if you had to pick some of your favorites from each era, who would some of the guys be? Because, again, you've, it blows my mind how much you've seen in terms of professional wrestling. Yeah, well, I started, you know, back in the early 70s, and I was a fan in the 60s. So, you know, obviously Bruno San Martino was one of the uh, mainstays through the 60s into the 70s. I also uh, was a Bob Backlund fan. Uh, Bob was a unique individual because of his uh, red, white, and blue persona, Mr. Mr. Mom's apple pie uh, in today's genre. I don't know if that could be accepted the right. way yeah. his his character was. Uh, also, uh, let's look Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, Steve Austin, Triple H, John Cena. The list goes on and on. I have so many favorites that if I were to give you all of them, we'd run out of <laughs> tape. <laughs> we don't use tape anymore, Howard. It's all digital. We'd run out of digital. <laughs> so what is what are some of the stuff that you get to do uh, nowadays uh, with with the, with the company, and uh, how are the, how are you utilized? Uh, I uh, am involved with WWE.com. I am a contributing. Uh, uh, editor, that's the title. I, I, I don't have a title as far as I'm concerned. They call me a special projects coordinator, but m you know my title is as long as I get my, my pay every every two weeks, then I'm happy. <laughs> I'm doing my job. Yeah. But I, I do work for WWE.com. I do a myriad of things for them. Uh, I am a historian. I, am, uh, uh, I host a live chat every Monday night, concurrent with Monday Night Raw. I do a live chat for our pay-per-view events. Um, I, I do many different things for the website, and because of my tenure and my, uh, my, my stay there at WWE, I'm still a phone call away from anybody in any department if they need, as we call them, thinkle facts, <laughs> historical data, and things of that nature. Isn't, isn't that great, though, that, you're, that just all those experiences you've had are still helping you work and helping all these other people work today? Like, I think that's a, you're, you're an amazing resource, I guess is what I'm saying. No doubt about it, and that's, that's nice of you to say because I feel that way as well. I mean, I've been there, I've done that. I've done that, I've been there. <laughs> and I'm still on the train. And the one thing that I don't want to do on that train is wind up in the caboose, because that's the last <laughs> car, and you could be dropped off in a second. But I still contribute. I'm still having fun. And, you know, I have a motto that I say, the day it doesn't become fun anymore is the day that I make it fun again. Uh, I have no plans of slowing down. Every day is a pleasure. No two days are alike. And that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Howard Finkel, the Fink. Howard, so good to see you again. And good to see you, Dan. Success, and uh, thank you. I'm sure you're going to have lots of fun here with the fans. I'm really looking forward to it, and thank you for having me on.